Hello! This is Brandon. I am your author for the evening. With Adam, your VP of publicity for the evening. Uh, the chat narrator. Chat I guess. narrator. That's what. They, there you go. <laughs> um, let us know if we are uh, if we're live. Um, what this is is this is one of our two spoiler streams uh, for the year. Um, we do these in what June, June and December. December. Um, so just laying some ground rules. There will be no lost metal spoilers for the first hour. And then they will be allowed for the second hour. Yep. So if you even can avoid writing any into the chat, we would appreciate it. Other ground rule is? Oh, for the lost metal. For the lost yeah. metal. Uh, just don't ask, don't ask any lost metal questions. Um, and we have a thread on Reddit where people have upvoted their favorite questions. And, and there are a ton. Yeah. Um, that's where I'm going to be pulling yes, most of these questions from. We're going to get almost all the questions yeah. from there. Um, and uh, we also will not, not be taking any questions about the secret projects, even though I've released some material in that. Some people want, that's an extra spoiler level. They just are trying to remain extra spoiler free. We won't even be talking about the titles. Nope, we will not even, so, please do not post titles of those uh, in the chat. Uh, so yeah, and otherwise we're gonna, we're gonna. So we're getting some uh, complaints about the audio. Ooh, audio, am I too so, loud? No, I wonder if it's, um... We're working on it, just just so you know. Taylor, Taylor, our uh, new guy, is working on a, a new, new guy. stream. Wait, how well, long has Taylor been here? Oh, Taylor, man, it's not that new, actually. Uh, six months, six months well, ago? It's relatively new. Yeah. Uh, but he's working on a new stream setup. Okay. So uh, there's going to be a little hiccups. Yes, we have, a, like, not a laptop, but an actual PC, uh, full-blown computer thing. Um, <laughs> it was. It's actually my gaming PC um, that I... You know, played uh, bought so I could play video games with my son, and now he plays with all his friends, and so he doesn't need me anymore. He has he has m moved out of that proverbial nest to playing Valorant with his with his friends, mm -hmm. and I do not crash that party. Uh, this was so we could play Halo Anthology together, um, among other things when pandemic started. And uh, just for a little troubleshooting ease, if you hear it only on my mic or only on Brandon's mic, let me know in the chat, and that will help us figure out yeah, what's the going sound on. issues. Oh, yeah, the, the whatever issues yeah. are. Uh, are they oh, it's both such – oh, both mics. Okay, I'm going to step off. Just okay. I'll, I'll be back in a second. Ooh, Adam's going to troubleshoot, and I'm going to entertain you. What am I going to entertain you with? Um, boy – we had, a, we had a fun meeting today uh, where we're just trying to put together ideas for the Kickstarter for um, the RPG that we eventually want to do. That's quite a ways off, but uh, it's a fun thing that we're doing. Uh, oh, here's, here's a thing for you. This isn't official yet, um, but I think... What we're going to do, this is your first warning. It's probably going to be officially in the state of the Sanderson. Um, I think we're going to push back the words of Radiance Leather Bank Kickstarter. Um, main reason for this being that I've just, we've been talking about it in March. We've been planning it for March for a long time. But we're all, I, I called my team together. We're all just a little uncomfortable with the idea of doing another Kickstarter when we haven't fulfilled on you know enough of our previous ones um i want to always be in a position what oh, we got it so what we're going to do mm -hmm. is we're going to cut the audio for a second we're going to oh. route it to a different thing because we're pretty crackly okay um and since you're talking about something so important i would rather than be able to hear it okay if that works for you yes. so bear with us for just a second as we change the audio audio changing going away at some point this song will oh man it needs to rhyme i will defray really adam will defray my song yes i won't defray my song <laughs> you guys didn't know you were going to hear a crackly brandon singing to you today you thought you were going to get answers about your very detailed and interesting spoiler questions and indeed you might but first brandon sing
they're doing lots of things over there where they're plugging things in and plugging other things in. And so have we done that? It's not been done yet. I think it's he's still trying to yet. figure something out. Okay. Hmm. But please let me know as you're uh, listening to this if you're still hearing stuff. When we come back, then no, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, well, it should still be crackling. We know about that. They're going to try something else, uh, but we figured it's better to crackle uh, and to chat with you guys as opposed to having you sit here and stare at me um, and while I sign pages, which I guess is what you kind of do anyway, but at least now you can hear me as well. Um, so what I was saying earlier, um, uh, sorry for the crackling, expect us to be pushing back that Kickstarter. Um, I, the, the words of Radiance one, I just, I feel, would, will feel a lot more comfortable with it if we have had six months of the year of Sanderson shipping. Um, and if we've had the first of the minis start to go out. Um, and we know that the things that we're doing, people are appreciating and are liking and that we're doing a good job before we ask you to do another one. Uh, and so expect that announcement in the State of the Sanderson officially, but you get a preview here on the spoiler stream. Spoiler for the State of the Sanderson. Um, so. Some people are saying crackle and find out. Which crackle I find, and find out, Which yes. I find humorous. Yes. 
one of the things that um, we would we would like to do is um, for years. I, this is just another thing that happened in the, the meetings today. For years, if you came in costume to one of my signings uh, and I saw you um, or things like this, I had a special pin I could give you. But they weren't that special. They mm -hmm. were just pins that we had. I would give you a pin. Uh, and so I've asked for a special you came in costume pin mm -hmm. uh, that is specifically only given out by me. And so we have to figure out what that would be, uh, what kind of pin – would it uh, would it look like and things like that? We uh, we've we've had a lot of fun coming up with different mm -hmm. pins and things like that. I kind of also want this is more of a you thing, uh, more more of a Jeremy thing mm -hmm. uh, who's working on our website. I think it would be cool to have a page on our website where we just list all the pins we've given out over the years. That is a good idea. That just got a picture of each of them so that people know uh, because it's kind of become a thing for us. Um, and I, I don't know. Let us know in the chat. Would you enjoy being able to keep track of the random pins we've come up with? Or is this how, how hardcore are you, my fan base, on your Cosmere pin collection um, or whatnot? Okay, so I'll give you just one second. Okay. of okay. uh, uh, common words. Wow. I'm not allowed to say I'm hardcore? Oh, you can say it. Uh -huh. We just can't type, we can't type it. Katie, you got to watch out. You, you got to watch your potty mouth, Katie. Um, I know I know you uh, very well, and, you know. It uh, looks like it might be left ear only. See, we're working. But it's is not it left crackly. left ear only, or is nope. it? Hey, it'll, it'll be fine. In okay. Much better. Fix. There we go. Yeah. Awesome. Woo. Hey. Well done, troubleshooters. That was a fun journey. Yes. Yes. And I enjoyed telling you all about the ending of the Cosmere yeah, while I just, we were silent. And I, I just, uh, I never expected, um, jokes ruined. I was going to say um, Odium and Kaladin to get married or something like that. Yeah. But, you know, joke. Yeah, yeah. Time passed. Time passed. Yeah. Who who would have expected Batman to show up? Um, all right. So I guess we're going to start doing questions since people have been waiting patiently. We will. We will. I'm assuming the patient part because I can't see the chat. So Forced patience at the very Forced least. Forced patience. So here we go. So Dunkelheit says, Chris mentions in the Ars Arcanum that her research suggests another set of abilities more esoteric than the Voidbringers. You have said before that the only magic we haven't really seen is void binding. Yep. But you have also said that no one has used cultivation magic on screen, and in parentheses, not counting boons and curses. Mm -hmm. Is this other set of esoteric abilities cultivation's magic, and is it called life binding? Hey, Raffo, what a great question. What an excellent question. Uh, remember that... When I originally conce uh, conceived the Stormlord Archive, I was thinking of 30 magic systems. Oh, wow. And I decided that that was instead 10 groups, or five, three groups of 10, mm -hmm. and I wasn't going to call it 30 magic mm -hmm. systems. And indeed, that, that's even vague because our Fabrials, their own magic system, what is going on? Yeah. So anyway, eh, who knows? Who knows? Raffo. First one of the night. Mm. Uh, this next one is from Lear Lirpa. Uh huh. Given that Stormlight healing matches to mental self image, as shown uh -huh. by both the Lopen and by the Reshi Monarch, could a really powerful hypnotist change someone's self image in a way that would affect Stormlight healing? Could a powerful hypnotist use Stormlight healing to change a human into a listener? Theoretically possible to an extent. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, there there is a limit to this, mm-hmm. but the limitation is the amount of investiture you have and access to stormlight as um, or you know void light uh, can evidence this. Like transformations that are happening in the storm uh, to the listener forms are involved in this. That could theoretically happen to a human as well. Uh, but you would basically, uh, most likely what would happen is it would have to involve a specific, specific set of circumstances and then entering the storm and then exiting as a listener. That could happen. Uh, that wouldn't, like you guys asked some far-fetched things. That one's not so far-fetched. Uh, it does require some specificity, uh, but it could happen. Um, so, yeah. Okay, this next question from Striker EZ. They say, this is a very important Hoyd question. Ooh, ooh. He's, he's still taking good care of Sir Squeakins, right? That little rat is going to become an immortal rat pet of Hoyd's. Yeah. Hoyd did take good care of Sir Squeakins. Um, so. Um, very important question. Very, very important question. Uh, he, did, he did take good care of Sir Squeakins. Uh, but that is a Lost Metal spoiler. So oh. that would have been a better one to ask. In the second, yeah, uh, thanks. So, try try to be. It's been a minute since I've read it, yep, and I was yep. I don't. Yep, try try. I was wondering it. if it was one yep. of the Kremlings or something that he was nope. telling a story to. So I apologize yep. that one mm-hmm. uh, slipped through. Yep, lost mail spoiler second hour is what we're going to try to do, but yes. Mm-hmm. So World Hoppers podcast says the epigraph that mentions Discord in the Final <laughs> Empire is the same <laughs> chapter where Sazed is introduced. Was that intentional and meant as a way of foreshadowing? I want to, to say yes, but the truth is um, I did what I always do, which is I wrote all the epigraphs in one long thing after I finished the book, and then I spaced them out. Now, it's been almost 20 years. Maybe I'm like, oh, I should make sure of this and that uh, for things that are happening here, but the honest truth is that I can't say that I did that on purpose. Um, that would be have been really, really a clever thing to do, um, but... Serendipity's good, too. Serendipity. Um, but again, I write the epigraphs mm-hmm. almost always as a big section, and then I slice them up, and I try to make sure they look good at the start. Like, they're written... Oftentimes, not even, they're oftentimes written as a big paragraph that I'm then splicing up and then revising to make sure it works in its own little thing. And sometimes I'm taking pieces of one and moving it forward. And so uh, the answer to that is pretend I'm that smart, but I don't think I actually was. Red Pill is for chumps, says, how's the search for the next Stormlight title going? Last I read, you mentioned it was still in the consideration phase. It's still in the consideration phase. I'm a lot closer. Um, like I, I, I'm feeling pretty good about it, um, about some options I have. Uh, and so, um, I'll, I'll, I, I, I should have it before too much longer, but I, I shouldn't make that promise because maybe I won't, maybe it'll be another six months. So, or longer. So yeah, we got a minute still. So we got a minute uh, still. So, so how's it going? I feel like I've made progress. Very nice name. Sixteen says in Bands of Morning, Chris breaks into a party to talk to Wax and gives him a business card with an address. Yep. Wax suspects her of being in the set. So did they ever check back in there? And if so, what happened? So yes, um, he would have uh, checked that number. Um, but by the time he got around to it, after Bands of Morning and all the things happening there, there was nobody there. Cool. Uh, Hankster1024 says, will we see Hoyd's Lightweaver truths? Um, Raffo, unlikely, but Raffo, possible. Ratatata says, in Era 1, Sazed says the only thing you can ferrochemically while sleeping is wakefulness. Uh huh. But in Era 2, they have the sky ships that require everyone to be storing weight to fly, and they don't land while people sleep. Yeah. Is Sazed just wrong? Or is that a difference between normal ferrochemy and using the unsealed metal mines? So unsealed metal mines, I am moving toward complete, you probably already guessed this, mechanical uses of investiture. And this indeed is a step toward that. Um, And so, you know, we are are stepping toward 
having a little machine uh, that gives you powers. That's what uh, that's what the world wants to try to find. And this is uh, this being mechanical. The um, we'll just say that the medallions um, and the things that they're building have more of a life force or more of a identity of their own mm -hmm. than a traditional metal mine does, even though they are unkeyed and all of this stuff. But yep. Freddy says if gold fair if a gold ferrochemist formed a Nile bond, could Stormlight heal? Could Stormlight healing fill gold mines? Man, that felt like a tongue twister. Could they turn into basically a hospital by storing identity? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, plausible. There's a few things you're not considering. And how do you say? Do you say Nahel or Nile? Because I think I've yeah. heard both in the books. Yes. Or yes. audiobooks. Um, I've always said Nahel. Nahel. Uh, which is a bit of an H, like okay. Nahel. Uh, but I mean, these are words that I've said for decades mm -hmm. and only started writing the books recently. Mm -hmm. And I have this thing where it's like, it's, it's this word in my head. Um, and eventually the canonization, canonization can change that mm -hmm. over times, even my pronunciations mm -hmm. and things like that. So I say not hell. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good for me to know. I will mm -hmm. forget it next time I see it. Yep. Uh, just to silver eye says in the Cosmere, if everyone on a planet believes unicorns exist, would some kind of unicorn shadow appear in the cognitive realm as a result? If yes, could you create an actual physical unicorn out of it? So no, it's not going to quite work this way. Um, what's going to happen if everyone believes unicorns exist, but they don't, uh, there's various things that could happen. You might end up with some investiture taking on this persona and becoming this, but it's not like you could create it. But over time, you might end up with the equivalent of a spren. But then it's not going to be just like a physical unicorn running around. It's going to be – it's going to have more spren aspects. Um, and my guess would be that over time, these things feed each other, mm -hmm. right? Like people see one and they describe this is what it looked like and that changes the public perception to better match. And then over thousands of years, what you end up with is, hey, there's things in the forest over there that are a type of mysterious creature that are transparent and look a little like a horse with a horn, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, maybe fly or things like this. Like they, they would, they, you would end up with something in the middle mm -hmm. between the two of them. Cool, cool. Um, Things wouldn't necessarily pop up on Shadesmare unless there's free investiture in that same sort of that gotcha. same sort of way. Gotcha. Chromatic Chaos says you said that all investiture got assigned to a shard when Adonosium got shattered. Mm -hmm. Which investiture do the Dawn shards draw from? From what about the Aethers? Okay, Dawn shards and Aethers both predate the shattering, and the rules don't apply to them. Sapphire, Good question, though, yeah. by the way. Sapphire Bombay says, will we ever see on page what Odium did to Devotion and Dominion? Um, I would like to get some references to this, whether it's on page or it's a description. Like, there is, there is memory of this in the Seons, right? Like, they, they could express this. Um, and so there's a decent chance that that way, if you're talking about straight up flashback, then no, I don't think that I'm likely to do that. I'm not likely to write a story where that happens. Anything's possible, but I'm I'm not likely to. I don't think. Please type username says in an interview you said you thought you had canonized someone as a sliver in Rhythm of War, but then realized you didn't. Who is this character? Um, yeah, Raffo. That's what I figured. That mm -hmm. would be. Pershindi of uh, Ruidian says, were A.T. and Laris lovers? Uh, Raffo. Lirpa again says, if someone with the appropriate knowledge of where to place the spikes to be successful were to spike Risen and try to steal the power of the Donshard, what would happen? Uh, very bad time for the person attempting it. <laughs> Don Sard self protect. Oh, very cool. Yes. Uh, so, I'm yeah. excited to watch what the chat says on that. Mm -hmm. 
Page Runner 17 says, if a well-studied singer were to become an aetherbound, how would they, with their innate understanding of tones, evaluate the core aether's claim to be independent of Aiden Alcium and the shards? Uh, they would not have enough experience with the Cosmere in general to be able to say yes or no. They, how about this? If they went to all the different tones and compared them, they would find something different happening with the Aethers, I think is what the question is getting at. So there is some evidence cosmologically for the Aethers' claims to be independent of Aiden Alcium. There are also evidences that Arcanists could put forward that say otherwise. I just saw an interesting question from the chat mm -hmm. uh, from Sinjox. They say, why is Roshar the only planet with Spren? Uh, it's not. Sion's are Spren. Oh, you know, I never yeah. thought of them that mm -hmm. uh, uh, in that regard. So there are plenty of planets with things like Spren. Um, so. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Sapphire Bombay says, when Hoyd looks in a mirror, does he see what other people see when they look at him? Uh, generally, yes. Good question. You're trying to pin down what he's doing, but yes. Yeah, and the follow-up to that, mm -hmm. could Hoyt appear physically different to two different people at the same time if he wanted to? It would be take a lot of... Uh, so, depends on what angles they're seeing him from. Okay. And which version of looking different he's using. Could you, he do what you're asking? Yes, he could. Uh, he doesn't normally do things that would do that. How much, on a scale of 1 to 10, do you enjoy giving cryptic answers like that? Uh, six. Six? Yeah. Right in line with, you know, mm -hmm. normal, Brandon. Yeah. Six, seven, mm -hmm. usually. Cool. Yep. Um, BTIL232 says, where and how did the set learn about hemallergy initially? Hemallergy did not seem to be common knowledge, at least to Wax and Marisi, when given the book by Marsh. No, it but, was not. But the set seems to know all about it anyway. It, is this going to go into lost, lost metal? metal? Let's not lost metal. address that. Yeah. <clears throat> Fun question. Uh, maybe um, we'll ask it later. Unless yeah. you want to I mean, walk around yeah, it. Yeah. Let, let's, let's lost metal that one because it's mostly a non-lost metal spoiler, but uh, I don't want to answer it. I will answer it during the lost metal section okay. if you ask. I will save that one. Mm -hmm. Gracie Moo 8 says, approximately how many years before the evil on Thrinity was Naz born? Oh, boy. <sighs> I do not have that written down. That's a Karen question. Um, it's more of a uh, an Isaac question. Mm. Naz is an Isaac character, um, and Naz's backstory will be explored in Isaac's stories. Mm. And I would not even canonize it if I had the answer f here, because we need to let him have the freedom to to talk about all of that. So cool. Yep. Uh, Kitchen Abracoma 297 says, can you tell us something about Dalinar's parents, their names, why they didn't show up in Oathbringer flashbacks? What happened to them? Um, so Dalinar uh, gets along better with his grandparents or got along better with his grandparents than he did with his parents. Uh, let's say that. Uh, what, what else can I canonize? I mean, by that time, they're not around. Uh, you probably figured that out. Dalinar wasn't too sad about that. Particularly the past Dalinar not being the, the kind of person yeah. who, yeah. Um, let's just say that there is stuff in the, uh, um, the Alethi family history that has caused part of Yasna's consternation on uh, the way she regards how families act toward one another, you know, light-eyed families and uh, her concerns about all of that. Uh, here's a fun Brandon mm -hmm. question from the chat. At least I think uh, yep. you, you might enjoy this one from Big Shoe. Mm -hmm. If Roshar was an MTG land card, what color mana would it give? If Roshar was an MTG land card, the whole planet? You, we don't usually do whole planets. Um, so MTG land cards are usually biomes or cities okay. or distinct points. In fact, there's only one card I think that is a whole tech, actually a whole planet, and it gives all of mm. the colors. Uh, it was just released in the fun set. Okay. Um, and so a Roshar, if you're going to do Roshar, Roshar has all the biomes. You could get 
all the all the colors cool um off of roshar showing um, my ignorance of magic yeah right there yep. sorry about um, that so i would say that there's um there's a le- there's a little less red on roshar than there are uh on other planets not a lot of tectonic activity uh not a a lot of volcanoes mm-hmm. uh, and that sort of thing on Roshar. So I'd say we're a little down on that. Uh, lots of wide sweeping plains, lots of islands and water. Um, there are swamps, not as many. Um, like, and you wouldn't call them a traditional swamp. Not having soil changes that. So maybe a little less of that. Mm-hmm. So maybe Roshar would be white, blue, um, White, blue, green? Yeah. So what's white, blue, green? Just sky? White? No, green is not just sky. Um, whatever white, blue, green is, is that um, bant? White, blue, green is bant. So Rashard probably is bant. Cool. Yeah, people in the chat are saying it right now. So yeah, it actually matches Bant pretty well. And, uh, the Bant plane in um, in Magic the Gathering is the plane of um, of uh, honorable knights. Oh, that's who very fitting. Have armor that doesn't have backs because no one would ever hit you in the back. Um, the armor's their fronts. What a clever yeah. storytelling device. Oh, yeah. That, that's, I, I've that's always wonderful. remembered how, you know, like the backs are, you know, straps. There's like leather and stuff, but mm-hmm. you don't need you don't need armor back mm-hmm. there uh, because no one would ever strike you in the back. Well, and you'll never turn away. Yep. And uh, their, their mechanic, it's really cool. Uh, yeah, you'll never turn away. Their mechanic is... Um, you, uh, if in magic normally you can attack with all your creatures, right? In this, if you attack with one creature, it gets a bonus for every creature that didn't attack, that stands back and sends the champion and cheers them, uh, which is also just a really cool mechanic mm-hmm. that, you know, you send forth a champion who's like, instead of you, you know, you've got five one ones and a two two, you send forward the two two and it becomes a seven seven because, but it's only the only one attacking. Uh, it's a, it's clever. They also, have one they have uh one of the coolest things that i've seen them do is in magic world building is the knights ride on lions Mm -hmm. lions that are half lion half like they've got like they've got like big hooves almost and things like this so imagine crossing like a war horse and a lion a lion that has a little bit more of the build of a Mm -hmm. war horse that look really cool and it's again this idea a knight riding forward on its on its Lion with a giant mane feels so honorable uh, and so king of the, you know, of, of the savannah, I guess, sort of way. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a, it's a really, really sharp world building done for Alara. Uh, some of their best, uh, their best setting work. They do very good setting work, but I, I really like all of Alara. So there you are. Well, uh, I'm sorry uh, to everyone who's here for a spoiler yep. chat, but Brandon likes magic. That, I like, I like asking magic. him a uh, no, magic see, questions. So. That was theirs. That's their world where you know have the five colors of magic, mm-hmm. where they split. This world had been split mm-hmm. into mini planes that each were missing two of the colors of magic. So Bant is the mini plane that lost red and black, death oh, magic okay. and chaos magic, mm-hmm. and so they have only life, honor, and uh, intelligence magic, and so. You have this whole plane of people who can't access death magic and chaos magic. And no, so that's that is a that's very the world cool, building it led uh, into. Building. And then there were four others that you had two of the others missing, and they defined them by what they were missing rather than what they had, which is always before they defined you know groups by what magic they use. This mm-hmm. is they're defined by what magic they just don't have access to, uh, which is just really cool. They've done some very cool stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, this next question is from Priscelli. Yeah. What kind of work did Rulane do during his time as a spy? Did he commit active sabotage against the war effort, or was he merely gathering information? So very few. There are a couple of key things that he did. I would like to write a Rulane story at some point. Okay. Um, but he mostly understood that feeding information back and not being caught, because he felt he was in a pretty tenuous position. And rightly so, right? There's there's two big things going on. Number one, he does not have is not in possession of his full mental faculties, which makes it dangerous to try anything because he's like, can I trust that this is a good idea, um, right? And then number two, um, how hard would it be for someone to be like, hey, wait, maybe some of these slaves we got 
are spies for these guys, right? Like, it's not too hard a leap to make mm-hmm. that one of them might be, and that put him in really dangerous positions. So, yep. Um, they had other follow-up questions like mm-hmm. um, how did he get how did how did he get information back to his people if there was a contact? Yeah, that kind um, of stuff. I'm not most sure if you wanted to yeah. So, talk about that. So yeah, uh, it was mostly done. So if you go into um, the the book, you'll find that they're like times that um, they talk about bands of uh, listeners roving in mm-hmm. uh, and things like this and how far they think they got. Some of that was to cover getting people in to talk to spies. Uh, they got spotted, so they pretend to burn a bridge, mm-hmm. right, which they still would want to do. But there's this kind of whole cover operation of doing raids as close to the war camps as they get and sending people in. Uh, to um, you know, to and I think I remember a line mm-hmm. saying um, something that a Parshendi would never not do anything that he wasn't ordered to do, so he could just yeah. walk around. I'm not yeah. sure if I'm remembering. He was that much more free. Yeah, um, but he wasn't going all the way out on the plains. Okay. Like he can't can't cross the, in that form the the bridgeless chasms. Okay, right, um, and things like that. And so, um, yeah. Um. Uh, Yadrak 1 says, or Ladrak 1, what, if anything, would happen if you swing a shard blade through a Sion? Sion. So, Sion would not like being a shard blade slung through them. How about that? I, <laughs> a Sion would not enjoy that. Um, yeah. I, I really like that answer. That's fun. Spren don't enjoy it either. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I, and we've seen that. Yes. Well, it's not, that isn't necessarily going to kill either of them. Okay. But they're not going to like it. Parshendi of Ruidion again says, is there a connection between the roles of a certain order of Night Radiant and the singer form associated with their plate sprint, such as artistic light weavers and art form both having creation sprint? Yes, there is a connection, a deliberate connection on my part there. It's hard to keep all of these things one-to-one because there are way more forms than there are orders of Knights Radiant and um, things like that. So don't read too far into it, but I do make those connections in- deliberately where I can. D10 Bolude says, was any of the original vessel of the shards transgender? Can we expect to have a transgender main character in the future? You can expect to have a transgender main character in the future. Um, I want to be careful where I place this. Um, and, um, let's say that I'm much, uh, I am, my focus is on right now is doing, uh, Renarin and Relaine, right? Uh, it's a good focus. And, but you can expect this in the future. Yeah. Justice Silverai says, would the Stormfather call Tian or Oridin son of Tanavast? Uh, would mm, mm, I see what you're hunting here? Um, I'm gonna say Raffo. Uh, don't read too much into that, Raffo. I'm gonna say <laughs> Raffo, but don't read too much into it because the answer is actually it depends, and that's why I'm Raffoing it. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Ranks, ranks. That's a hard word to say. Mm-hmm. Will we ever learn of Ishik's fate? Did, <laughs> did he finally marry uh, my oh, mate? Ishik. Can you oh. tell us anything about his experiences during the events of the last four books? Man, man, there's so many people. They, uh, uh, I will try to get you Ishik's fate. Um, yeah, I will. I will try to. I will try to get Ishik's fate in. So such a fun character. Yes. But. Oh yeah, he was. He was so much fun to write. Um, so, um, so. I will I will do my best. Arshara, I always say that name wrong. Mm-hmm. And there's even a pronunciation thing, but I don't know if I'm supposed to roll the R's or something like that. Mm. Uh, so I apologize. Again, she's a, a try to correct me uh, without the O sound. Anyway, um, can shards lie anytime they want to other than when bound by oaths and such? Yes. Anytime they want to might be a little, but you that caveat you put on there. There are instances where they can't, but you should assume that they are able to more often than not. 
Shard has like, yeah, um, like. I'm sure we've seen instances of it in multiple places in the books. Uh, their duty to just randos, as we might say it, is much less than interacting with one another. How about that? Sinjok says, We've seen in both Secret History and Rhythm of War that a shard's power has a will of its own and can reject a vessel if it's not adequate, like yep. uh, preservation with Kelsier, and quote-unquote tempt if it is like Odium uh, with yeah. Teravangian. Yep. Does that mean that the first 16 that ascended needed to be fit for their respective shards? Um, yes, to an extent, yes. It was a little easier back then, but yes. Um, so there you go. Uh, and she, uh, Rashara maybe? So, and yeah, he- I will say, let, let's, let's point this out. Um, yes... So where where's why am I why am I hesitating on this? So not all of the sixteen could have taken any one of the sixteen. So not all of the vessels could have taken any any one of the sixteen. But the flexibility of which ones they could have taken were much greater than you're perhaps anticipating right now. Um, like there were certain shards that they had they deliberately had a person pick up that they thought would be a better controller of that shard, if that makes sense, um, rather than p- to picking the person who is the best match. Mm. So there you go. And a quick correction, Arshara. So I'm hoping I'm saying that now Arshara. correct. Uh, and again, let me know in the chat so I can mess it up again in the future because she uh, frequently gets uh, questions asked. Mm. Uh, Parshindi of Ruidian says, it's mentioned that Stormlight and Gems will flicker slightly. Is this the Rhythm of Honor? Mm, good question, Rafa. Space Corps is my dad says, one of the listener chapters mentions that the human language was easier to be understood because remnants of it were preserved in the listener songs. Does this mean that there was a human help in that there was human help in writing the listener songs? If so... Who were these humans helping the listeners reject the forms of power? Uh, wow, what excellent question. That is a great question. Um, I hope to be able to show this in flashbacks eventually. Hunter of the Rain says, could Steel Inquisitors read phone screens? Oh, could Steel Inquisitors read phone screens because that was in the metal? Oh, boy. Because it's like what phone screens are made out of um uh what like lcd screens yeah or? they're made out of what not lcds like the there's like a liquid almost right like li- liquid crystal mm-hmm. i guess that's is that lcd mm-hmm. liquid crystal display yeah so that's liquid crystal so could you read a phone screen uh or are they just asking cuz it's in metal or is it like I see. I uh, know they're they're saying like, all right, there's this blank screen, and it's just changing pixels colors. Um, so would an inquisitor not be able to see that because it's going to be indistinguishable according to their steel sight? I think that's what they're getting at. Rather than because I was going the route of this whole thing glows because it's metal, mm-hmm. right? And so they have trouble reading metal because. So I, I don't know if the question is is the phone going to glow too much because there's too much metal in it, or is it because the pixels don't really register steel sight, I'm going to say phones are a good way to hide information from an inquisitor. I would imagine that would be for just technology of that sort in general. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. The inquisitor, inquisitor's not going <clears> to, <throat> inquisitor's not going to uh, enjoy the the move to all digital formats. I'm just uh, gonna, probably. Now I'm imagining Hacker Man, Steel Inquisitor. Yes, uh, mm-hmm. which was humorous to me. Yes. Um. The Weird Tales podcast says, In Oathbringer, Dalinar says the third ideal of the Bondsmiths. I will take responsibility for my actions, and each time I fail, I will rise again a better man. Mm -hmm. He then opens a perpendicularity, saving the Battle of Thalen Field for our heroes. That's a lot of background. Later, Odium is ranting to to Teravangium about how Dalinar wasn't supposed to ascend with a capital A. Mm -hmm. The question... Mm. Lots of build up here. Yep. Mm-hmm. Is Odium's use of the word 
ascend, in quotation, yes. referring to ascending to the next ideal of the bondsmith, or is there something more going on there? I used a capital letter there intentionally. And um, normal uh, saying of oaths would not get a capital letter. Okay. That is in a character's perspective. So there's a character using that capital letter. The character uses the capital letter intentionally. Gotcha. Does that gotcha. make sense? That does make sense. So there you go. Not a word of Brandon, word of character. Yes. Uh, Common Werewolf 9265 mm -hmm. says, we know that Hoyt has three apprentices. Are all of them... Oh, are all of them human? Is design one of those apprentices? Design is not one, and they are not all human. I was uh, thinking that, and I was like, is this lost mm -hmm. metal? But it's not lost nope, metal. Nope, it's not lost metal. Um, so, nope. Uh, no, um, they are not all human. Uh, I've almost written a book about one of them multiple times. Mm. Um, in fact, one secret project started off about one of them, or there was like, it didn't, it, that's, let me phrase that better. When I was planning one of the secret projects to do, there was a plan to attempt to do one of them, uh, and uh, that was uh, that was the kite magic system, and I never got beyond the design stage in that. Um, uh, but the kite magic book would have starred one of Hoyt's apprentices who is not human. Mm. Chris mm. D says. I asked Ben McSweeney via Reddit if Taravangian's chapter icons were intentionally rationally symmetrical, and he said yes, but did not say if this was foreshadowing his ascension. Is it? Um. <laughs> uh, Rafo. Potato Tiger says, well. Why is that a Rafo? Uh, I have to talk to Ben. <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> yeah. Oops, I messed that one up. Um, so that's a, uh, yeah. I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to canonize things uh for Ben that he might have been saying that I don't have the full context on. Uh so. Katie Payne says that's just design. That's so, just design? That's what? what yeah, that's what Katie says. It's just the design, the icon. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. The designs all not all of them are symmetrical though. Pointing that out. Mm. Uh, some of them are, but not all of them are. Uh, Potato Tiger says, will we ever see a story from Mythos? Ah, uh, boy. I would sure like to write one from Mythos, but we'll see. There's, there's a lot of stuff I want to write. Uh, so uh, Mythos is a place. Uh, that's the colloquial term uh, for the place. So, mm -hmm. Next Toral says, when you kill someone to create a hemallergic spike, does their soul appear in the cognitive realm where they when they die or is it trapped in the spike uh weird kind of creepy stuff happens you're not getting the whole soul you get a piece of it i'll leave you at that okay uh nico uh buffasasa says if everyone in the cosmere begins to understand that there is space travel yep. does that cha oh, does that change the distance needed to travel around in shades mark considering its makeup made up of the beliefs of the people yeah i answered we've, this we've but no no this. that wasn't recorded this was at uh dragon steel's um, oh was it okay uh spoiler so at uh dragon steel 2022 we did a spoiler q a that we didn't record okay. right or did you record that? i did record you it. did record it okay well we'll publish I'll, it eventually we'll publish it but i'll go ahead and answer it again here uh because a lot of people asked this one uh so what's going to happen is it is going to make the travel distances longer However, people cannot conceive the immensity of space. And um, the amount different it's going to make it is going, not going to be so vast that it's insurmountable. It's not going to come one you know, fractional piece of what the actual distance is. Andrew Smith says, would a book about Condra be a good Dan candidate? Uh, yeah, a book about Condra would be a good Dan candidate. Uh, I think the first thing we would do with Dan, though, most likely, um, is create a brand, brand new world and a brand new story that really matches something he's excited about rather than have him start by doing a book um, in one of the other worlds. That said, he probably will also be doing some short stories 
in the other worlds to kind of start uh, easing into, like, we'll see how he is with character voices of some of the characters I've already done. Uh, Because, you know, I want to have him. Like, I really want to see, like, the King Lopin story that I have just have never been able to write. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So so a Chondra story, but uh, as a novel, I, I think that's not where we would start. I think we would start with this is... A novel playing into the strengths that Dan writes and how he wants to write that has world building and uh, plotting done with my help. So just one of the things in the mini, the large realm of possibilities. Yes. Mm-hmm. So do we want to move on to allowing yeah, it is. Yeah, it is 7 o'clock. I was going to okay. ask you if you wanted me to go straight to the long list of lost metal questions or do we want to alternate? Let's alternate. Let's, yeah. let's sprinkle them in. So... Uh, warning to you right now, we are going to move into allowing spoilers for The Lost Metal. If you haven't finished The Lost Metal, this would be a good time to turn off the stream and come back later. So, okay. do we want to start with that one that was way back Let's when? Let's go back to that one. Okay, hit me again with it. Where and how did the set learn about hemallergy initially? Mm-hmm. Hemallergy did not seem to be common knowledge, at least to Wayne and Marisy, when given yes. the book by Marsh, but the set seems to know all about it anyway. Yes, so it was not common knowledge, um, and uh, there was some help from uh, from autonomy on this, but it also involved the interrogation of somebody on world that did not want to be interrogated. And I'm just and checking. then a whole lot of experimentation. They had years mm-hmm. to play with this. They didn't come right out of the gate knowing exactly how to do it. And I'm just pulling up the other question real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, my internet is unhappy. I'm sorry, everyone, for the, the quick delay. Um, a while back, oh, this is my vehicles. A while back, you said if you didn't reveal how medallions are made yeah. after the lost metal, we yeah. could bug you for the step-by-step process. Can you tell us now? So I tried to find my little little write-up on this, and I can't find it. Uh, so I have to rewrite it up. So you can bug me, but I'm not going to give it yet. <laughs> um, it needs to be canonized for certain things that are coming up very soon. So I need to write it all out again, uh, double check that I run it through continuity, that it is right. The more we do these things, the more complicated it gets, and the more like computer programming in a world using physics that don't exist, it gets, um, which is fun. Like that's one of the, that's actually the feature, not the bug, that it gets really finicky how these things work. But it means I have to do that whole write-up again. Uh, And it it was like, it was several pages. So I am going to do that again. Uh, I have to have it in hand before I can do Era 3. Um, But uh, bug me again when I'm writing Era 3. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Aquilin Penn says, were Gliss and Toomey dead eyes before being touched by Ja Anat? Oh, Raffo. Good question. I haven't asked that before. Uh, Evgeny, Argent Sun, says, it looks like we are done with the sets and Telson stories. So can you share a bit about how the organization started and or how Telson joined them? Yeah, okay, okay. So um, the set began, um, honestly, because as a domino effect of things Kelsier was doing on world uh it is his fault he wouldn't necessarily take responsibility for it um group of people who basically knew that things were happening behind the scenes um and through various mock machinations and things like this um decided that there was power to be had from what they didn't quite know was off-world yet, but that they knew that they were, like, basically ancient gods, right? Um, and this was a great opportunity for uh, for certain individuals and uh, beings around the Cosmore, Mirror, specific ones uh, uh, in specific, certain ones in specific, uh, to kind of take over the reins on this. Um, and, uh, people who begin looking for ancient gods find them, it turns out, in the Cosmere, 
uh, sometimes. And um, so uh, Telson was involved from a young age um, and Wax's parents were not, um, but uh, Wax's uncle was. Um, and let's see, did he? I don't think he actually recruited her, um, as I remember. Um, it's been a while since I uh, went through these things, but um, he, being part of it, I believe, was part of how she kind of found her way there, mm -hmm. if that makes any mm -hmm. sense. Uh, Telson is always very ambitious and always knew, like, Telson can be seen as a bit of a, of a model for the set itself in that she knew there was more out there that people weren't telling her, and she found it, and then it consumed her, basically. So, there you go. Now, I'm not sure if uh, the name is uh, misformatted mm -hmm. uh, or if it goes part of the question. I'm going to read it, and maybe it okay. will make sense to you. So, um, this is from God. Okay. And it says, 16, does he originate from Scadriel? Does he originate 16? Does he originate from Scadriel? I'm not sure if that's just a copy and paste error. They didn't finish the question. That's exactly what it shows. So let's go to the next one. Okay. He's the character in Shadesmar. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have. I, I yeah, he's talking that. about. Yeah. Uh, so um, the, 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 they're, they're asking about the odd character who lives in lasting integrity. Um, it's been a minute since yeah. I've read that. Um, so the answer is yes. Uh, this is a, this is a Scadrian, uh, transplant, um, because it's one of the people that they think might be, um, Staris, but turns out isn't. Mm. And yes, that is a character from Scadrian. Uh, and people are in the chat saying Telson recruited suit. That's right. Telson did recruit suit. I remember. Yep. Yep. So Telson recruited suit. So she was looking for things. She was, she found her way to it. Yeah. So there we are. Uh, Ed Warren, uh, since suit is his title. Yep. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I knew there was something there that, but man, it's been, it, you have a lot of stuff to keep track yep. in your brain. That totally yep. makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I know like Telson, like I said, view Telson as kind of a, a, an example of how the set itself came to be. And I have to talk around some things because I want to write secret history sequels, but I don't know if I'll be able to. Mm -hmm. And in them, you should be able to see the origins of the set. But it is planned right now to be not, it's not like Kelsier founded it or even Kelsier did some, but the, the ripple effects of things Kelsier was doing. Uh. Matthias Leibo says, are the coin shots that helped Steris with getting people out of the flood zone okay. who seemed rather concerned with whether or not she was following the law actually skybreakers? Uh, <laughs> um, so we'll just, uh, we'll just leave a little... Uh, leave that one right there. So how about this? Um, at this point in continuity... A skybreaker could not easily get off of Roshar. In fact, by this point in continuity, I believe can't you can't hold me to this one too much. I believe the only radiant who's managed to get off of Roshar and maintain powers is Hoyt. Mm. Um, so I believe that's the case, which would make sense because Hoyt is weird. Hoyt is weird. Well, he also has lots of uh, lots of knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he had to use a specific method to get, yeah. But anyway. <laughs> I love watching chat after those kinds of answers. Yeah. So I, again, don't hold me to that, but I think, I think by this point, he is the first to get off of, out of system really. Off world doesn't really count because you can go to Braze or Ashen. Uh, but off, off system, I believe. He was, yeah. Anyway, there you go. There you go. I like cats. Two forty six says, mm -hmm. "Are you still working on Kingmaker? And do you have any updates?" I don't have any updates on Kingmaker. I've basically, um, 
I love that this story. Um, I don't know if Hoyd's voice is the right voice for Kingmaker. Um, there's a couple of really good lines, but the whole thing I tried like three times and it didn't work. So I may have to do it in a third limited if I want uh, it to work. Uh, it's a really fun, interesting uh, story that I would love to write, but I am not currently working on it. I am currently working on Stormlight 5, uh, and there you go. And that's enough of, for it's, you to be working it's, on. It's, uh, like I got, I got my, uh, you know, my, my target for November, mm -hmm. which is 30,000 words. Uh, but then I wrote in the thing. You probably saw Octavia posted it. And I'm like, now I have to do that. 12 more times in a row. Yep. Uh, and if I do that 12 more times in a row, then we will have a book um, that is, you know, 450,000 words long. Uh, that might not be enough. Um, so I'm not done with the first sequence yet um, for Stormlight 5 that I talked about in my, my update. Uh, and I'm 80,000 words plus in uh and i really hope that sequence comes in at under a hundred thousand but the chances that it will are very small <laughs> and that's one fourth of the book mm -hmm. um and so um and that's that's a fourth of the book not counting interludes so yeah people are very excited for five hundred thousand words yeah i know i know you are i know you are Oh, boy. Um, the revisions on this are going to be... <laughs> everything's going to kill me on this book. Uh, uh. Uh, Loose Theron Telescope says, At the end of the Lost Metal, we learn that Marsh will be using adium from the Et Metal experiments to stay alive going forward. Yes. However, mm. Peter recently revealed, and you confirmed, that the adium in Arrow 1, which stored youth was actually a mix of adium and electrum. Yes. How will this continue to work to keep him young? Oh, they just make what what so they're they're gonna have a different term for pure adium and for what has been known as adium and what they're making. It like it's not it is not hard to get the right mix down for what he needs to stay alive. Cool. So I uh, it is hard to make enough of it to keep him alive. Well not hard, but Definitely not scalable to more than one person. How about that? Um, that's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. But they are able to do it. You just got to make an alloy. So, yeah, yep. And this, uh, I, I will apologize for this. This is, this is a post arrow on retcon um, where I realized I need all the god medals to do different things. And this is just one of the aspects that comes down. So for those who don't know what's going on, so I get done with Era 1. I start really working on the nature of metals in the cosmos. I'm like, ah, adium should be burnable by anybody. Uh, it's a god metal. Um, the way that god metals work uh, and things like this is not in line with how I've made adium. So I'm like, all right, what they call adium has to have trace elements of something else. Uh, and then there's a purer form of adium out there uh, that would be the, the true pure god metal. Uh, and that is, that's one of those unfortunate retcons when you're just doing all this continuity uh, and things like that. Um, and it works just fine in the books, right? Because the way that Adium's being made is uh, a pretty complicated little process there in the pits of Hath Sin. Um, so anyway, uh, so the question is right. Was this Luz Ther Luz Theron Telescope? So the question is the right question. Uh, they are going to get out of this, says it is going to get out of this pure Adium, which he is going to need to tweak before he gives it to Marsh. Mm -hmm. Whether Marsh knows he's getting a tweaked version or not is subject to your own uh, interpretation. The metal formerly known as mm -hmm. Adium. The metal formerly known as Adium, yep. That makes uh, that for, the chat. For, uh, for Arcanist purposes, if you want to call the other one pure Adium and the, the regular one just Adium, uh, I'd recommend something like that for your wikis and things like that. Uh, Pedro Enrico says... Uh, do all four Dawn Shards have the same origin? Um, oh, uh, let's raffle that. Um, there's nothing. No, again, don't read too much into that. This is me saying, look, I got to raffle stuff from Dragonsteel. Um, just got to. Yeah. Uh, another one from Evgeny. 
Mm -hmm. With all the new Avatar lore from the Lost Meadow, can and should the Mm. Stormfather be considered to be an Avatar of Honor? Ooh, Raffo! What a wonderful question. Uh, There's some... uh, There's some fertile ground for theorizing there. I, I, I gave you, uh, I gave you the prologue of that so that you could spend a few years theorizing, guys. So go ahead and go forth. And and he must be very good at asking questions because we ask his a lot. What Evgeny? It, yeah, and Evgeny's one of our arcanists. Yeah, oh yeah, I yeah. know, but mm-hmm. I'm just saying, like, yeah. consistently being upvoted. Yes. Well, there's a, there's a reason why I don't know if I'm outing you, Evgeny, that we asked Evgeny to be an arcanist. So, um, yeah. Okay, Bumtown One says, is Adonalsium a unique being, or are, were there others? Uh, Raffo, the, uh, the Aethers would say that there were lots, that there's like a bunch of Aethers and Adonalsium, mm-hmm. that there were co-equals. Yeah, and that one goes a little bit into the Lost Metal as well. Yeah, but we can do lots. Yeah, this yeah. is Lost Metal, but yes. I so. was trying to alternate them. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> so the Aethers would say there were lots of them. Uh, I, oh, sounds like you were going to say nope, something else. You okay. go ahead. Isaac Betzold says, could a shard be split into smaller intents, like if honor were alive and then was split into min- maybe integrity and bravery? This is possible, yeah. Um, very plausible. Again, you ask some weird things sometimes. This one's not that weird. This is very plausible. Um, I'll give you one guess about who this next question is from. It's Oh, again. Okay. <laughs> We've always understood Elantris to be one of the earliest books in the Cosmere. Yeah. But we see uh, K's as code names in the Lost Metal. Yes. One of the latest, one of the latest books has the timeline contracted significantly, or are we just looking at the typical Shadesmar time dilation tricks? Um, yeah. So here's the thing, uh, Arjun. I'm not going to be able to. I think I've said this before. I'm not going to be able to give you strict timelines until I write. Uh, um, till I write Elantris 2 and 3. So my plan originally, which might have been a bad plan, was Elantris 2 to take place um, some 10, 15 years after Elantris 1, maybe a little less than that, but, you know, years have passed. Uh, it was called Decor uh, in, my, in my notes. Um, and then for 3 to be hundreds of years later. Um, I don't know if that's the right move anymore. And if the three isn't hundreds of years later, then where we slot uh, Elantris in is going to change because of where I need certain characters to be in some of these things and certain things to happen. Uh, We are getting really close to where this is going to get nailed down and locked down, and I'll get locked down. Um, Probably right when we start Era 3. Uh, is when all of this is just going to start. I've promised you guys a timeline. Once we release that, we're, we don't want to retcon it. Does that make sense? So that's why we're waiting to release it. Uh, and it's really going to be a question. But Case does have some time dilation going on. Um, so, um, though, I say her name wrong because I'm not from uh, Cell. Um, but, yeah, she has time dilation going on. Uh, she is... She is to more time has passed than the 10 or so years. She's like, well, she's like what? She's like seven in Elantris. And she's like young 20s now. And this age that she appears, I believe something like that. So, um, so yeah, there you go. There's, there's some information for you on that. Uh, I'm playing loose and free with this until I write, uh, until I, I really get down to writing these and you know my plan loose plan is still write mistborn uh era three book one elantris two era three book two elantris three era book three three so yeah five years of uh of writing there that uh i can't even really think about until i've got a stormlight five uh in at least tor's hands if not your hands so matt g says uh, how long would Wayne be able to pretend to be an Aes Sedai in the White Tower? <laughs> I, I think I think he could go the whole series. <laughs> I, I think I think he could have a you know he, he would he yeah he he would he would play so well 
in that series, that uh, in that world. Uh, he'd get bored, maybe. So maybe it, it, it would come down to Wayne's boredom level, mm. not to whether they catch him. So he is very good at go. that. That's, that's, that's what I think would happen. I don't know. I don't know how they are, how they are with, uh, with certain like, aspects. Like there's a, there's a problem with, um, with the Wheel of Time being written in the, uh, in the 90s and certain questions that I'm not going to raise right now. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. Next Toral says, in the Lost Metal, Milan is said to be the first Chandra harmony sent off world. Yes. Does that mean that the Chandra on Roshar are not in Harmony's employment. Yes, good good way to connect the dots. That is exactly what that means. Ten Fern says, <clears throat> in Demo's world hopping as part of the 17th Shard, he has interacted with the Ghost Bloods. Mm. Oh, has he interacted with the Ghost oh, Bloods? Oh, has he? And if so, does he know Thytokar is Kelsier? Um, so he has interacted with the Ghost Bloods. Uh, I don't know if he's made that connection or not. I would have to write some stuff from his viewpoint and see where it falls into the timeline. Like, he knows Yaddle and her brother and where they came from. Like, that's a group from where Demo currently makes his his base of operations. How about that? And Arshara says, Brandon, you previously said the Conjurer on Roshar was an agent of Harmony. Did I? Well, no. Randy can change his mind. I'm changing my mind. <laughs> yeah. No. I, uh, so, no, not an agent. Well, and without mind. giving you any other context yeah. to that. Um, no, no, no. I know who this, per- this conjure is um, and things like that. So I'm not sure why I would have said that. But, um, but yeah. So new word of Brandon. New word of Brandon. Yeah. Um, I I know exactly who this Chandra is and what they are doing and yeah. I'm going to say I don't know why I said that before but now no. She says haha okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um Evgeny says we know a bit about the Pathians and the survivorists in Era 2 mm-hmm. but almost nothing about the other major religion of the basin sliverism. Can you share a bit about it and about Marsha's role in it? Uh, I'd rather not right now. So we'll raffo that. Cool. Mm-hmm. Seth Cran says, who in world named the intents of the shards? Is it possible that they misinterpreted the name in any case? Oh, and yeah. that the intent is not fully in line with the name we know? This is possible, right? This is absolutely possible. I mean, you have, you have context for this with Odium kind of claiming um, that it's not the right name for Odium. Others would disagree, but Odium has tried aggressively to change that name. Uh, and I will say, you could, argue, you could make the argument, well, Odium just is bucking the trend, and this is actually who Odium is. It is possible, which is why Odium would try to get that name changed. These are imperfect definitions of ideas as most words are uh they did those ideas could be misinterpreted they did have a a follow-up question uh Mm -hmm. in line saying could a deception shard be out there calling itself something else and none would be the wiser none being the wiser would be real hard um the other shards knowing but other people not knowing could happen be pretty hard uh, for the shards to not know, but it is within the realm of possibility. How about that? <laughs> Odium rebranding is. Yes. Uh... <laughs> Odium is trying to rebrand. <laughs> Odium's been trying to rebrand for a long time and it has not stuck, but yes. Uh, White Caillou says mm-hmm. Will Wax find out that he is a misborn during his lifetime? This is something we won't yeah. see him again. Yeah, Ma- or Wax suspects it already. There's a piece of him that knows by the end of this book. Mm. Uh, he will know pretty soon. He's a detective, right? Like, uh, if things... So, so Wax is used to getting a little extra help from the miss, which is clouding his ability to put his finger exactly on what's happening, if that makes sense. But 
there's a piece of him that, uh, that expects. And you can anticipate that uh, even in the year between uh, in the prologue, that it, you know, soon after his recovery, he went and tested and found out what's going on. And he's keeping his lips sealed about what that implies. Uh, Jeff Frazier from the chat says, mm -hmm. was Terion who gave Van Duralumen originally a world hopper. He shows up for a paragraph, invents a new alimentic medal, and then we never hear of him again. Right, 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 Rafa. Okay, next one is from Arshara again. Mm -hmm. Did honor and cultivation binding odium to the Roshar system directly cause the death stroke to honor? Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Rafo, it's fiddly. Letters Word says, now that we know a bit more about the connection between Trell and autonomy, yeah. can you explain who exactly the person named Trell in White Sand is and how they connect to the Trell, the avatar of autonomy, we see in the Lost Metal? Was this Trell just another person who acted as the Trell avatar after being invested by autonomy in a similar way to Telson? Uh, this is the way I want you theorizing. So, there you go. Steven Peterson says, is Hoyd's restriction on not hurting someone living absolute? Could he cause pain for pleasure situations? Um, yeah. So I will say... What a delicate phrasing, yeah, yeah, by yeah. the way. It is not absolute. You've, you've seen at least one loophole, yeah. right? Uh, the thing about it is, this is Dawn Shard derived, and weird things happen with the Dawn Shards. So... Andrew Smith says, is Stick an avatar of autonomy? Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, I mean, ask the hard questions, you guys. Yeah, that one I yeah. thought was obvious. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. Uh, the Stick made uh, quite the appearance at Dragonsteel 2022. Did you see the Stick? Uh, in Hoyd's uh, Shop of Curiosities. Oh, I did. I did. Yeah, the yeah. Stick was there, uh, lording was so over cool. it all. That mm -hmm. was so cool. Yeah, uh, you got a good film through of that, or yeah, I think you... Octavia got quite a bit of stuff in there. I don't know if Taylor, did you film anything in there? Okay, I know okay. Octavia was filming quite a bit in there uh, while you yeah. were in there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we should have done, but there's so much going yeah, on. There's so much going just on. Just had to clear everyone out and have them bring you through with the cameras and lights and shown you each piece. But future Dragon Stills, I bet those pieces will be reused and uh, Hoyd's shop. Will I be, certainly hope so. Uh, we'll be there for, for visitation. If you don't know what this is, because uh, you didn't make it, uh, we were surprised by this. Mm -hmm. um, so we uh, have had the pleasure of working with um, a team of individuals whose job is basically to take cool ideas and make them reality, right? Um, uh, they, we say, we want this. And they're like, all right, we're going to build this thing. Uh, they're like builders and then prototype it and then, you know, we can get uh, versions of it uh, made. They've been working with us on things for uh, some cool things for the uh, for the year of Sanderson uh, that you will get in your in your boxes. Those who subscribe to that uh, and they've made some other cool things for us. Um, and so they decided they asked uh, for a booth to show off some things. And we're like, yeah, totally. And then we get there, and they have set up this, like, imagine a sp little spook alley, little, but instead of spooky, scary stuff, it is artifacts from around the Cosmere that they have fabricated. Yeah, it's like a one-room theme park. One-room theme park that, you know, you enter one door and go out the other door still, like kind of a little bit of a long room. Um, and it had just, it had captive spren that were made with using pro rear projection mm -hmm. on crystals. Um, they had armor, they had swords that they'd fabricated that were, you know, life-size mm -hmm. Oathbringer, um, Nightblood, they had, and man, Oathbringer was heavy. It looked heavy. It was made out of aluminum and it was still heavy. Imagine if that were iron. Um, but, um, they, uh, they had, they had the stick, they had some locks of, uh, the royal locks, some cut pieces of the royal locks. They had just... There must have been 40, 50 things in that room 
that were just really cool. Um, and I was I was blown away. And they didn't tell us they were doing this. They just are, uh, they wanted to do this thing, and they built it. And um, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was a highlight of the convention for me. Uh, why did Shai have to draw a map of the Ellendale Basin if the Jar of Door was her source of investiture? Did the map connect her to another source of investiture? Uh, so no, the map didn't, but her magic is still wonky. Uh, Selish magic has some has some wonkiness to it, and it needs to be tricked. It needs to be tricked. Interesting. Yep. Mm-hmm. Laura Burnham says, how were Shalon and Ja'anat sending messages to each other in the gap between Oathbringer and Rhythm of War? Um, Rafo, I'll have to go back to my notes on that one. Yeah. Uh, Alarica says, uh, you told us uh, to ask you again after the Lost Medal if we didn't know exactly. Did we ask this one how medallions are made? Yeah, yeah, we did. And I'm on the hook for that. I'm going to get around to it. I, Let's, uh, I will get around to it. Another one from Seth Cran. Um, when Kelsier said in the Lost Metal that he couldn't still push over water, do the Ghostbloods think that Kelsier has his alimentic powers, and is he lying to them about it? Uh, yes, they think he has alimentic powers still. Nikolai Powell says, Cultivation, ruin, and preservation seem like aspects of Aiden Alcium's cosmic nature— rather than personality traits like other shards. Is there a fourth shard that is cosmic in nature? Read that question to me again. Cultivation, ruin, and preservation mm -hmm. seem like aspects of Adenalsium's cosmic nature rather mm -hmm. than personality traits like the other shards. Is there a fourth shard that is cosmic in nature? I think they all are cosmic in nature. Okay. Even honor, like... You can say that's a personality trait. I don't think it is. I think it's a cosmic nature, a cosmic sense of justice and order, if that makes sense. Um, and Brad, like we're phrasing it as a personality trait, but that's not really what it is. Like, you know, like there are those that would argue that the shard of honor is what, you know, makes things fall to the ground when you drop them and obey natural laws, right? Like, um, yeah. Um, Michael just gave me another um, way of asking what they are trying to find out. Okay. Um, this one from uh, Ben Epic. Assuming the Dawn Shards each represent four shards and con considering their intents seem to be similar— are endowment, cultivation, and ruin all oh, in the same category? I get what you're saying. I are they all saying. change shards? Uh, I'm going to raffle that, raffle that yeah. for now. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, that, I get I get what they're asking as well. Okay. Uh, Lirpa says, far in the future, after all the people in the lost metal are dead and gone, does someone maintain the ritual of changing Wayne's hat every year? Does it become <laughs> some sort of civic custom like the ceremonial lighting of a Christmas tree? If Absolutely. Not, That's what, what I imagine. Serving as the final. I am just imagining during this question, you know, the uh, statue, I think it's in Scotland or somewhere, but they have a cone that's perpetually on the statue's head. Hmm. I imagine this being done. No, for I, Wayne. They're, they're, they're absolutely going to be changing his hat. So, yeah. Um, okay. That answers the, the follow-up mm -hmm. question. Jason says, how does Roshar keep its rocky terrains? Wouldn't yep. corrosion and vegetation break down the rocks outside of Shin? Yes. Good question. This is why I built the creme, uh, from the mm. beginning. Uh, like that was my first question to myself. And you will actually find on a geological time scale that Roshar has drifted, meaning been worn off on one end mm -hmm. uh, and is kind of shrinking a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then different pieces are growing that way um, uh, off of just different parts. Very slow scale. The existence of Roshar is not so long that you'd be able to tell much. But, you know, there, there have been inches, if not feet, lost from the eastern portion of Roshar. But the dumping of the creme um, is my perhaps fantastical um, science answer to what happens to erosion. Plants grow, they do crack the stone. 
they do uh, start to break it down. Even even Rosharan uh, plants that uh, you know the roots aren't meant to go deep or things like this. And then Krem gets in those cracks, fills it in, sticks the broken pieces back together, and you end up with stone still. Uh, that was that was my devised answer to have a, having a world uh, that was hit by a storm, but was also stony. Rocco Topliff says, "Was a Don shard?" Ooh, I can give you more on that one. Okay. Though. It's the same reason. The re- this is the same reason why coral reefs continue to exist, right? It was like a, there's got to be a growth mechanism mm-hmm. after things are being weathered away to make sure that they continue to uh, to perpetuate. And so, anyway, an underwater coral reef was one, or above water coral reef was one of my touchstones for Russia. So there you go. Rocco Topliff says, "Was a dawn shard involved with the night blood's creation?" Or did a Don Shard alter it? Raffo. Uh, Chondra Alamancer says, Are the men of gold and red from any shard world we've seen so far, do they use any magic system we currently know? Yes. Maybe not only, but yes. Fox says, In Edge Dancer, Lift refers to Hoyd as old white hair. Was Hoyd not in disguise at the time? Did Lift and Hoyd have any encounters between Oathbringer and Rhythm of War? Lift has seen, um, ha, ha, Lift knows, how about this? Lift knows what Hoyd is. Maybe not intellectually, because Lift doesn't know a lot of things intellectually, but she has connected dots that others have not connected, and indeed, she has seen him without his, uh, his disguise mm-hmm. on. She's another weird one, so that makes she sense. She is another weird one. She pops up in, in th- places she's not supposed to. Um, and, yeah. Uh, that was done deliberately, I shall say. Learpaw says, where is design during the events of the Lost Metal? Uh, it's a good question, and it will be raffled because where is design? Ooh, excellent question. Bill Woodruff says, with mm-hmm. your love of video games and the rise of lit RPG genre, mm-hmm. have you thought of writing in that genre? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So I feel like, for me, I am unlikely to write in a genre that I have not extensively read in. Um, and I have not extensively read lit RPG. Um, nothing against the genre, uh, it does, the ones I've tried haven't quite clicked for me. Uh, they seem like they are good lit RPGs, but um, doesn't quite something about the genre hasn't clicked for me yet. Um, I will never say never, um, but so far, just not quite finding anything that quite clicks for me. But you know, I, I might have said the same thing about other books that I ended up writing. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't have it, yeah, we'll we'll just leave it there. Mr. Brendan says, during an interview recently, you said that you have been writing down one-liners for Wayne for the past 10 years. Yeah. Are there any one-liners or quips from this cast of characters that didn't make it into the book that you particularly enjoyed or wanted to share? Oh, man, I would have to go look at my, let's see, all right. Shall we, after I do this, open up my, my file of Wayne quotes sure. and see if there's any I didn't use? Um, that'll, be a, that'll be a nice uh, nice little thing. Um, all right. File O Wayne quotes. Go. Is that what you have it uh, listed as or labeled as? Uh, no, it is actually just notes for the next uh, Mistborn gotcha. book. That would be funny. It would, it, it would be awesome <gasps> if I'd done that, but it's not. Because I have quotes for other characters in there, too. Uh, it's just the Wayne quotes are the majority of them. All right. And down into, I bet this is just in the Lost Metal file. Oh, no. I have to open this up because they shortened the. All right. So by modified, it's going to be down at the bottom. Um. Nope, that's the epilogue. 
that was three years ago that I wrote the epilogue really? to Lost Metal. Yeah. Oh, that is weird. Yeah, that is. I guess, is that, what's our timeline on that? That's before I wrote the rest of the book. Yeah, because the rest, I wrote chapter one one year ago. Oh, okay. And I wrote the epilogue three years ago. Uh, this is specifically the Kelsier and Seiza yeah. epilogue. Um, hmm, where are these? Because I probably edited it. Um, hmm. Problem is, I save everything as a separate file. So there are a ton of files in here. Um, and. Um, hmm. Man. And Katie, to answer your question, yes, Jane mm. did buy my jacket. Mm. She said it's so stylish. So she assumed that Jane did it, which is, you know. Yeah. You, yeah. Right. I can't uh, be too surprised. Mm, let's see. Let's look in let's look in here. Let's see if I have it in if I have any of them in cool stuff that needs to be used sometime. Nope, I don't have any in there. I can't, the file, hmm, people are going to love this if I can find it. Just give me a second. I know staring at me, looking at my phone is not the riveting information that you came here to, the content you came here for. Um, but, um, the, there's the book guide. Um, for a long time, this was the only file in the chapter, or in the in the folder. Um, but did I move it out? Oh, maybe it's. Ah, there is one. Here, I found it. Okay, let's see. Uh, I used the I get a trial by, uh, 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 trial of my peers uh, line that wasn't actually uh, actually there. Let's see. Um, did I use the line? Um, boy, there's plenty of part smart people um, in the city. They come from Ellendale to have a look at all the idiots that live here. Um, let's see. Wayne, there are children nearby. Why do people always care about children? They're the only ones that ain't going to understand what I'm saying. That was written years and years and years ago. That one made it in. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, this one I did. This one I did. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, um, here's one I didn't end up using because I thought I was using too many uh, penis jokes. <laughs> Wayne, after some, someone says something about a penis, sighs and says, ah, oh, it's the little things in life that bring us so much happiness. <laughs> I didn't end up using that one. Um, 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 let's see. Nope, I did that. Oh, someone took a pile of dicks and sewed them in the shape of a person. That's why I didn't do the other uh, penis joke because I had already just done one. Um, um, did I use broad imagination? I think I did. It's been a minute since I read yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's broad imagination. You have a broad imagination. Well, most of my imagination does involve broads. You did use yep. that I one. used that one. I used the seminal parts, um, which I'm not sure if people are going to get the seminal joke, right? Um, but, you know, my lots of my, yeah. So there, there's at least one. There's one that didn't make it in. Uh, so half of them, not half of them, but like a third of them are dick jokes. So there, it's Wayne, you know. Okay, sorry, I'm just going through and removing ones that uh, we've already done. Mm -hmm. Let me get you another one that... Um... Yep, it was actually just called Random Thoughts. Oh. Yep, <laughs> um, and was a bunch of Wayne quotes and a couple of other quotes. So, Joseph Sorensen says, mm -hmm. Is Adonosium a god medal and not a person? Um, Raffo. A lot of people, I have been deliberately cagey, so you should assume that if I ever answer a thing that, like, you know, they're saying, an awesome person, 
uh, and stuff like that. I have not canonized this and don't intend to canonize it, and I try to take people's questions and um, and deal with them and give them a good answer. But you shouldn't take it if they like. They ask, uh, you know, when Aiden Mastin did this, was he this? And I answer it to be like, oh, he's canonizing the he. Um, I have not really canonized other than there are plenty of people who refer to Aiden Austin that way in world. Uh, Lucerne Telescope says, in his letter in Oathbringer, Pachi tells Hoyd that, quote, you have spoken to one who cannot respond. I had assumed this meant Bavadin, but she seems pretty darn capable of responding in the Lost Metal. Hmm. What is Pachi referring to here? Oh, uh, Raffo. Okay. Um, does the dead body of a shard pull at time and space, thus causing time to pass slower in that place of the Cosmere, almost like a black hole? It can go either way in the Cosmere, depending. But the answer is yes. A, uh, a large amount, like a deific amount of investiture, uh, will, like any amount of investiture, will cause a bit of time dilation. But the amount that you're getting from even a shard pool is not enough to be noticeable. Um, I mean, it is. Like, you can notice it even on our planet if you take a jet that goes fast enough, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, so it is noticeable, but not relevantly noticeable. Um, you know, we're talking a slippage of a day or so in a year, mm -hmm. even off of, like, a, off of a shard pool. And don't canonize me on that one. Uh, I don't have the actual numbers, but that's, that's the, what we're talking about. Um, there are chunks of investiture and of deific nature that can cause amounts of time dilation <coughs> that would be virtually impossible in our universe um, without you being becoming one with a black hole, right? Um, like we can, there's a story I want to tell. And I don't know if I'll ever get around to telling it, about um, like an entire society that rises and falls in several seconds mm. of time dilation to everyone else. Mm. Um, and, you know, I want to be able to tell stories like that. And to you couldn't do that in our universe. But that's part of the reason why we have the Cosmere. So, anyway. And you can do whatever you want in yep. the Cosmere. Mm-hmm. Well, you within know, reason. within reason, I want to stay, stay somewhat consistent, but I built yeah. the rules to be flexible enough to allow for imaginative things like that. The point of the Cosmere is stories that we couldn't tell on Earth. Very nice name 16 mm -hmm. says, where do Elantris and Emperor Soul happen relative to Era 2? Yep, we talked about this. Did we? Okay. Um, well, it's just that I'm not quite canonizing this yet. Okay. Yep. Uh Kairai says, you once said that you'd give us... Okay, that's another medallion's question. Yep. Good for you all, three of you, for uh, for keeping on me. I don't mind being uh, being poked on things like this, but I'm not going to give it to you yet because I don't have it. Chaos2651 says, seriously, what was going on with Bloody Tan? Was he controlled by autonomy? How did he move with what appeared like adium so less he died? It feels like there are a lot of open questions regarding him that we never addressed. Yeah, there are a whole bunch, aren't there? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to answer those right now, but uh, I'm glad you're still asking me those questions. Mm -hmm. The one, uh, Kia, mm -hmm. do the scholars in Silverlight understand that romantic difference between a shattering of a shard and the unique hyper-compression of devotion and Dominion's investiture in the cellish cognitive realm? All right, one more time. Yep. Do the scholars in Silverlight understand the romantic difference between a shattering of a shard? Uh huh. Yeah, and, the, and uh, yes, unique hyper. Yeah, they do. Do they fully understand? No. But do they understand any better than anyone else in the Cosmere that is not a shard? Yes. Strikehand says in the Lost Metal, it mentions autonomy having avatars in other worlds. And Shudareth on Cell, Jadith speaks directly to Wyrn who then propagates his will down the hierarchy with yes. within the religion. Ambition is rewarded, but only if it aligns with the orders of the hierarchy. That sounds very similar to the philosophy used in the set. 
but replacing Jadith with Trell. So is Jadith an avatar of autonomy? <laughs> Raffo. <laughs> You're a very smart person. Oh, man. That was great. It's Yadith, by the way. Yadith? Sorry. Yes. That is also one of the, the YJs. Yeah, the um, audiobook listener, not the They reader. say Jadith. Yeah. Well, no, no. Um, I'm saying I since I yeah. don't you ever read, see yeah. it written yeah. anywhere. Yeah. So uh, I will say this. Here's what I'll canonize. There is something happening, and the people there legitimately believe and have reason to believe that their God is going to return. And I have said before many times that book two of Elantris begins with the return of their God. Because they've said, you know, God can't come back until everybody converts. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, but they found a loophole. They're like, well, except those heretics in, um, in Elantris. And also, you know, that other little place, that tiny little region that, uh, that's over the mountains uh, where they, they talk about roses, they don't count either because they don't, they don't actually part of the, the planet. Um, so. So, that's, uh, so that's something to look forward to at, uh, if I ever get around to writing Dakor. Um, is um, Return of Yadith, the god of, uh, yeah. Uh, Amin says, could one combine all of the rhythms, mm -hmm. honor plus odium plus cultivation, mm -hmm. uh, would the result be the ultimate light? Uh, Raffo. Okay. Was Wayne, in fact, the best lay Milan had ever had? Yes. <laughs> she wasn't lying. Let's just say Milan spent a lot of her youth very sheltered. Mm. And um, is it not as big of a compliment as Wayne thinks I mean, it is? You know, <laughs> she is immortal, you know. So, but may, he maybe imagined it. As a bigger compliment, but it's not a not big compliment. How about that? That's great. Yep. Uh, Bubble Boy says, could one negate the negative effects of wielding nightblood with an aluminum gauntlet? Um, uh, this is theoretically possible, but you also wouldn't get mm, some of the benefits. But many of the benefits are not being utilized by people who draw night blood. So to some of them, it would be, you wouldn't be able to notice the difference. Uh, Lucerne Telescope says, in the Lost Metal, we find that Chaudel have four arms, making six appendages. Mm -hmm. In the same chapters for the Liar of Partenel, we find that a Fane deer has six legs. Yes. Is this pattern important? Yeah. So Further, mm -hmm. how relevant to this is that if you count four legs plus two wings, dragons have six limbs? Yep, that is the exact correlation that I would like you to make. Um, so dragons are fame, if you're wondering. Okay. So if that's what the question is, yes, dragons are fame. Parshindia of Ruidian says, if an attracted fabriole is blocked with aluminum in a certain direction, will the attraction bend around the aluminum, or does it work purely offline of sight? Oh, man. Attracting aluminum, bend around the aluminum. Perfect. All right. Uh, uh, this could bend around aluminum, I believe. Yes. I, uh, so can bend around aluminum, uh, which would allow you to do some cool things. Yeah. That is, I believe, it. the, the aluminum's going to set up, though. So the aluminum's going to set up a big patch of kind of an interference pattern, right? Like like imagine, you know, you, you it's going to make a shadow. How about that? That's a really good example. You're going to bend around the corners like light, is going to bend around a corner to a similar extent. Hopefully that helps in your theorizing. Love That Dog says, why won't Moonland stamp, stamp wear off by itself? Ooh, this is an excellent question. Uh, the answer is it might someday. Uh, but uh, the other uh, question is, 
it's been a spell. Uh, depending on where I time these things, it's either been hundreds of years or decades mm -hmm. since. Um, and um, Moonlight has had a lot of time to practice with powers and um, investigate what's possible in the Cosmere with magic. Um, and talk to some of the, um, the smartest people in the Cosmere about how it works. And is you should draw from the way the soul stamps work, the kind of more mundane ones, that Shay has made a ton of progress in pushing forward the art of forgery. Bennett Alterman says, if Don Shards self-protect... Mm. What's the need for Larkins and Sleepless? Yeah, they do self-protect. Larkins and Sleepless are there. You're assuming that the Larkins and Sleepless aren't there because of Don Shard influence, which is a falsiest, false assumption. Mm. Cannot have my pain says, did Kelsier create the bands of mourning? Does he want them back? And did he get them back? Ah, uh, Rafo. Mm, there's there's stuff going on there for sure, uh, and they just have a f another question right underneath. Mm -hmm. How often do Kelsier and Marsh talk? Are the conversations more friendly or more confrontational? Uh, depends on the moment, but the 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 speaking should be seen as regular, if not frequent. Uh, Light Phoenix Seven Thousand says, "Are we supposed to be drawing parallels between the unmade being placed in gems and the gems used against the heralds?" Yes. Sapphire Bombay says, Hi, Brandon. Hi. It was so great meeting you at New York Comic Con, and thank you for very pointedly not raffoing my question about Yasna. Uh huh. I asked you about her being with Tal in Prime and Wit in the published version, mm -hmm. and why she had to be with an immortal entity. Mm -hmm. Thank you for shedding light on that. Mm hmm. It is my pleasure for those who wanted to know. I believe my answer was something the frame of it is hard to find people who would be on equal footing with Yasna. Yep. Uh, and we will also be publishing that one as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's just an embargo on it until January 10th. Okay. So is that what it, it, is? it will be yeah. sometime after January well, 10th. We appreciate them letting us record that yep. and post it. Uh, I do not great. mind an embargo at all. Yep. Um, so um, good on them. Read Pop treated us really well. Yeah, they were great. Um, so. Thumbs up to New York Comic Con. Um, they, you know, once upon a time, I did not like going to New York Comic Con, partially because of the Javits, partially because of, of various things. And this was one of the best con going experiences I've had. So, so thumbs up, team at Read Pop. And, and Chris in particular, who I mm -hmm. worked with, he was great. Yep. And, uh, oh, I've forgotten her name. The handler they gave to me was so good. Yeah, um, I don't remember her name. Yep. So. I would definitely like to have that handler uh, in the future at future conventions. So, um, yeah, what we got? We oh. got five minutes left, four minutes yeah, left? Yeah, four minutes, and mm -hmm. there was a question for this. Um, okay. I, I want to push my luck and expand on that. Is it important that she is with someone? For someone who is so against the idea of marriage and is asexual to boot, mm -hmm. it feels like there must be very good reason for not leaving her single. single. Totally, oh, yeah. unrelated follow-up. Okay, so. so here's the thing. It is more about the idea of um, conflict and exploration. Um, so remember that these are completely separate books. Um, and um, there's kind of a reason I didn't have a relationship for Yasna in the first couple Stormlight books, because no, she doesn't need to be in a relationship. That's not a core need for her character or her personality. Um, but at the same time, um, I always let relationships, I try to let them arise very organically and naturally in my books. And I don't try to put too much of a thumb on the scale for those. Um, and in this case, it just felt right. It was the right thing to explore for her character. It was the right way to kind of reveal and talk about how uh, she sees the world and who she is. Um, and there was really all like when I first thought of it, I'm like, wow, that's a really great and a really terrible match at the same time. That's what I'm looking for in a lot of ways. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, and the unrelated follow-up question is, is Wit still capable of producing children given his situation? Situation? Uh, he, um... 
<clears throat> how, how, what do I want to say? What do I want to say here? Uh, I will say Raffo. Um, I will say Raffo. I'll say Raffo. This is, a, this, is, this is one of the Raffos where I absolutely have an answer, and I'm not going to give it to you yet. So. Uh, and probably the last question, um, so you can make it to writing mm -hmm. group on yep. kind of time. Mm -hmm. uh, Asmodeus9 says, in the Lost Metal, people talked about Autonomy's army as if they know of her unleashing it before. Similarly, they talk of her opening perpendic perpendicularities on worlds where she shouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. Roughly how many times has this happened before? Once, twice, somewhere in the tens? Uh, this has happened a handful of times before. Uh, well, depends on which of the two things you're talking about. Opening perpendicularities where she shouldn't be able to is a consistent thing. Our unleashing armies, not so consistent. Well, there we are. Ah, well, that was fun. It's also kind of hard. Um, so because of that, we're going to have another live stream this month. Not a spoiler stream. Not a spoiler stream where I get to relax a little bit more. Uh, cause I gotta be on my toes with you guys. Um, I gotta be, I gotta be ready, um, and things like that. And you'll have, you'll have seen me have to like back up and go through a question several times. So, uh, be preparing your silly questions for me for the 19th on my birthday. Uh, see if you can come up with the most interesting yet somewhat uh, light-hearted questions. That's what I would ask you for in that particular stream because I don't know how many of these I have left to sign, but I think that's my last stream to get as many as I can sign. And the more of them I sign, the more of them you'll be able to buy in the words of Radiance Leatherbound uh, Kickstarter, which if you missed the beginning, we are pushing back. Um, we'll talk about that in the state of the Sanderson. Um, but... There we are. Thank you all for entertaining me while I have to sign these things. Uh, and we'll be back in a couple weeks, couple weeks, two and a half weeks. Um, so, um, And if we're on the ball, if I'm on the ball, they'll be on the ball. If I'm on the ball, the State of Sanderson will be out by then, and you can ask questions also about that um, at that stream. So bye-bye.